It's my great pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon to this afternoon's lecture, which is one of a series of distinguished lectures offered as part of the Chinese University of Hong Kong's 50th anniversary celebrations. We are indeed privileged to have as our lecturer on this occasion the Honorable Jeffrey Ma, Chief Justice of the Court of Final Appeal of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. The basic law provides a guarantee of rights and liberties enabling everyone who lives and works in Hong Kong to live a full life, pursue happiness, and have the peace of mind of knowing that there is an entity, the law, before which everyone is equal and on which reliance can safely be placed to protect them and their families. The phrase, all are equal before the law, is often taken for granted. I think this is good as long as any, uh, everyone realizes just what it means and why it is of such pivotal significance. When one is dealing with, for example, issues involving the freedom of expression or immigration issues, public controversy is almost certain to arise. The way in which courts deal with such issues, and I'm here not just talking about the actual result of any litigation, is critical. It is critical because the way in which a court approaches such cases, its methodology, and most important of all, its reasoning, will demonstrate whether those principles which provide the foundation of our legal system have been applied. They are controversial in that a sizable proportion of the community will have very strong views one way, and an equally sizable proportion of the population will have just as strong a view the opposite way. Sometimes, the vast majority will have strong views against only a tiny minority. What do the courts do in such situations where, whichever way they decide, a sizable number of people will disagree with, if not protest against a result that is reached? The answer is, of course, ultimately quite a simple one in terms of the court's approach. Whether or not a case is a high-profile one or involves controversial top, uh, topics, or is just a run-of-the-mill one handled on a daily basis by the courts, the approach is exactly the same, and it is a principled one. The court will simply apply the law to the facts, and the judge or judges will do so adhering to their judicial oath. No regard will be paid to whether the result will or will not be a popular one, not that this can be gauged in the first place, certainly not whether it will, to whether it will accord with what the majority of the community wishes. Indeed, to have regard to such matters is really quite out of the question. It is therefore inevitable that the courts will, from time to time, face criticism, sometimes quite fierce, from sections of the public. Criticisms and discussion of the activities of the courts are indeed healthy to this extent. If such criticism is justified, then improvements can be made or lessons learned. If not, at least people are taking an interest in matters of considerable importance. While everyone is free to criticize the decisions of the courts, surely no criticism can be leveled at our courts for a failure to reveal the full extent of the reasons that make up court decisions. It is for this reason, I believe, that the doctrine of precedent form such an important feature of the common law, the more compelling and cogent the reasons are to justify a result, the more attractive it becomes to follow such reasoning in a later case when a similar situation presents itself. The importance of the reason judgment can also be seen by imagining a system in which proper legal reasoning does not exist. Where proper, legal re where proper reasoning is lacking, Speculation then is fueled as to what may have motivated a legal result. Even judicial independence may be questioned. I would like to think that most people in our community, whether lawyers or not, believe that the legal system which exists in Hong Kong is a good one. I, for myself, believe it is. Although it is one that is, like any other legal system, is capable of improvement and advancement. What of the next 50 years? It is perhaps not too early now to begin to think about this, 
At some stage, important decisions will have to be made. In my present position, I am concerned with Hong Kong's system of law. One of my main responsibilities is for the judiciary to continue to earn the respect and confidence of the community and all who are concerned with Hong Kong. If the judiciary can continue to do what is expected of it, this then is a system that is worth preserving. As the community faces whatever challenges appear in the future, it will want to retain all those institutions that have served the community well in the past and which will do so again in the future. I thank you.